All righty, we are live on Facebook for another episode of TNT. I'm here with, well, you, Pastor, now you're my brother. So I'll That's just right. be Brother Brian Gray right now. How's That'll that? Work. I'll, right, I'll, I'm here with I'll, Brother Brian Gray, and yeah. we're going to talk about righteousness. So if you don't mind, just welcome and greet everybody. Hey, glad to have everybody on here. Glad to be here myself. It's exciting. Good topic, righteousness. Glad I am. Yes. Didn't get, hey, didn't get it on my own. Couldn't afford it if it was for sale. <laughs> That's true. It's <laughs> it's a gift that no one could afford, but everybody has it just given to them by yeah. our by Jesus. I mean, it's just it's a it's a good news. Good deal. Very yeah. good news. So hey, before we get into it, I just want to remind everybody I have us pulled up here on Facebook on my iPad. So if you have a question or you have a comment, please feel free to post it on here. If I see it while we're live, uh, we'll try to answer it. If not, I'll try to answer it afterwards. So, because uh, this, why we do this is to get more knowledge out to people, more understanding. And if they have questions, then we want to answer it so they're not just in the dark and wondering what's going on. So, that sound good? Sounds wonderful. All right. So, we are on the topic of righteousness. And I love last time you were on, uh, you, you shared something that honestly I've thought about a lot since then is, the number of times righteous or sin was mentioned in the book of Romans, you said it was mentioned 45 times. 44 of those times it was mentioned is a noun, not a verb. Correct. So, so many people are focused on the verb, not the noun. And you said we need to think positionally, not behaviorally. So that got me going into today's kind of question and topic. And I know we talked a little bit beforehand, but if I'm righteous and I need to think positionally, so my position of righteousness never changes, but my behavior still kind of contradicts every so often. I'll say less now than it used to, which is what we're supposed to be doing. So if, if my behavior is off, does that jeopardize my righteousness or why do I still operate in a position where my behavior is wrong if I'm in right standing? Does that make sense? It does make it, it makes complete sense, but I, that's that's probably the age old question of, you know, how do how do I live out my faith? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I believe I believe in the last the last broadcast I told you the story of a of a gentleman that I had talked to a number of years ago who had he wasn't a he wasn't a Christian in the sense that you know he hadn't been born again. He certainly had some religious thoughts. He he knew a lot of people that were. Uh, were born again people, but he'd obviously come in contact with a lot of Christians who didn't seem to be enjoying their Christianity. You know, that's not a very good, that's not a very good testimony, you know, yeah, but the yeah. Bible says the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy. If you're missing the peace and the joy part, then you, something's not, something's not clicking right. But right. he asked the question, he said, uh, and he was sincere. He said, why, why do so many Christians seem to be so miserable? Hmm. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I thought about that. It kind of hit me kind of hard. It's like, OK, this is an observation that he's making. It's a reality mm -hmm. to him. Obviously, he's come in contact with Christians who didn't seem to be enjoying their Christianity. Yeah. I didn't really have an answer for him at the moment. This is this I, ha I do now. And I did right after that. It took me a couple of weeks, probably. I had to go ponder the thought. I was a lot younger then. And I just I might have been, you know, maybe in my 20s. I don't even remember. But I went I just had to had to had to kind of look inside and. Lord, what, what is that? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I got an answer. And the reasons Christians are miserable is they're not living in agreement with their own selves. Mm. And we yeah. use that because here's, here's the reason this is important. When a person is born again, their spirit's born again. They're, right. made a new, they're made a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away according to the, to the word of God, and all things become new. So they're new creatures. And what's the, the beautiful part about that is any sin that has been committed by an individual prior to salvation is not just forgiven, which is they are forgiven, but it's remitted. Mm -hmm. It's as if it's never happened. They're translated, according to Colossians, from one kingdom to another kingdom. They left all from a spiritual standpoint. All the, the old man is dead. He, he doesn't exist anymore. He's been, that's why we get the terminology born again. Mm -hmm. Fresh start, brand new, new entity, a new species of being that never existed before. Yeah. Yeah. But then once a person is born again, then they, they do need to be forgiven from time to time mm -hmm. because there are certain behaviors that even Christians can engage in that are improper. They're, they're, they go directly against the word of the Lord. And we know that's why 1 John 1, 9 says, 
If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. So there's unrighteous behaviors that a Christian can actually engage in. Yeah. It, does, it doesn't remove their position of sonship. It breaks their fellowship. It breaks their intimacy with God. Mm -hmm. it'll, hinder the, it'll definitely hinder them spiritually. So I would say that if, and this is, this is classic, we all have to deal with this. Nobody's born mature. <laughs> right, right. Nobody's born again mature. And just because someone, you know, might, you know, be 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, that doesn't make them mature spiritually. Mm -hmm. Spiritual growth is a total different thing than natural, you know, genealogical maturity. You right. know, so I would say that we have to put, put, you know, put the responsibility where it's at and it's, it's on an unrenewed mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. You yeah. know, it's, it's really, you know, the Bible talks about, and what, here's what's interesting about this, is in James... It talks about receiving with meekness the engrafted word, James chapter one. Mm -hmm. It says, which is able to save your souls. That's an interesting, that's an interesting verbiage to be used because mm -hmm. he's not talking to sinners. He's talking to Christians. Right. The book is written to believers, but yet he's talking about their soul being saved. Mm -hmm. But in, in a lot of Christian vernacular, to be born again, to be saved is the same thing. And, and we understand the con contextually that it can be, mm -hmm. but there's this, there's this renewing of the mind. You know, there's the thought processes, you know, we're changed inside in our heart. And so, you know, we can jokingly say when you get born again, if you had a big nose before you got a big nose after. Right. If you're six feet tall before you're born again, you're six feet tall after. But let's go deeper than that. How about your thought processes, mm -hmm. the way you process life, the way you've been conditioned? The, how about just just maybe flesh, fleshly behaviors? Right. You know, let's 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 use this example something very non-threatening for our listeners <laughs> let's say that someone is has a short wick in their temper they have yeah. a, they have a tendency to kind of go you know we, we say fly off the handle whatever that means right, right and and you know they 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 can have a bad temper and then some people say well that's because i'm irish or that's because i'm this or i'm italian you know right. or this it runs it runs in my family all my family's this way well that's probably true in a sense that there's natural things that people struggle with that becomes a part of their makeup. But when you're a new creature in Christ, you're not that way spiritually. Right. So what happens if you're spiritually born again, you're in right standing with God and you're righteous before him and you're holy and you're blood bought. And it's a gift because you couldn't earn it. We can read some couple of scriptures on that here in just a minute. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you start engaging in behaviors that are unrighteous. Mm -hmm. That's where the problem lies. And that's called growth. And there's there's ways to address that. Do you lose your righteousness because because you you, you know you you had a mad fit? Boy, if that's the case, you don't talk about yo-yo Christians. I mean, you you'd be righteous. You you could be righteous, unrighteous, ten times a day. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. But, it, it, it just let me just jump in right there. It's, sure. Yeah. It's the righteousness isn't dependent on what you do it's dependent on what jesus did and what he decided exactly. to do with it is to yes. give it to you yes he did and and here here's this this should be a comfort to new converts but i'm always i'm always cautious mm -hmm. in presenting biblical truths because there's ditches on both sides sure sure you know and you know sometimes people say well you shouldn't teach this it gives people a license to sin the joke goes they didn't need this license they sinned before they had a license that's right. You know, yeah, they're, so, sitting just, they're sitting just fine without a license. So yeah, just, you know, people don't need that. So I'm I'm going to make the assumption that if anybody's watching this broadcast, they're sincere mm -hmm. and they really want to serve it and they want to do it right. Right. Yes. They're not trying to find the line to live as close to it as they can. They're not trying to get away with anything. They're not right. trying to validate right. bad behavior or say that, you know, I can actually live according against this part of the Bible because this part's going to fix it. Right. I'm gonna, we're just going to say that's not the hearts of most of the people that we, we deal with. Yeah. Uh, I, I would like to read, read this, um, you know, because my, my, my belief is, is that people who accept Christ, you know, I would, I would say that most are sincere, who really, they really want to do right. They really want to get it right. And they, they have serious questions. And, you know, the sense of condemnation is a terrible thing that grips people. Uh, mm -hmm. I just, I wanted to read this passage of scripture. Um, and we're familiar with this. It's in Ephesians, and it talks about being saved, how, how a person gets righteous. Mm -hmm. And it may not exactly, you know, totally use this verbiage that we're using, but it's the same thing. It says, um, it says, Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace you have been saved through faith, 
and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. It is the gift of God. Verse 9, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Okay, so if works didn't get me into the kingdom. Yes. So how am I going to reconcile works while I'm in the kingdom? Mm -hmm. And are works in themselves going to get me ejected from the kingdom? Right. Now that's that's we're we're digging a theological thing here. You know, <laughs> you know well, that. Well, I think it's it's a great question because if works can't earn you righteousness, what works could make you lose your righteousness? And that's that's the point. Yeah. And so you know. And again, you know, we have the code. If we're going somewhere we don't need to go, <laughs> you know. Really? But, no, it's fine. It's fine. You know, but uh, again, you know, this is uh, works didn't get us in. Verse 10 says, for we are his workmanship mm -hmm. created in Christ Jesus. You know, there's there, the Bible's so rich because there's a legalistic righteousness that, that Paul talked about, mm -hmm. you know, the law. And yeah. then, you know, hey, obviously he was pretty good at it. And he'd tell you too, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he had most people beat, uh, you know, <laughs> but most folks are not in that category. You right. know, but then as a Christian, how how do you reconcile people who really are sincere and they want to serve God and Satan's just beating them up because they had a bad thought or they they mm -hmm. their flesh rose up on them and they got mad about something and you know, and, and now they're condemned. Mm -hmm. And Satan uses that against them. Yeah. You know, they've repented for it, which let's just make the assumption that if someone and if you're watching, if, if you do something that you know is not right. Then the best thing to do is to repent and ask the Lord to forgive you as quick as you can, mm -hmm. because first John 1 9 teaches us to do that. Stay in fellowship with God because you don't want to get over on Satan's territory. Yeah. You know, and so. If a person is willfully sinning and they know they're doing wrong and they do it anyway, that's a dangerous thing. It's forgivable, of course. Then <laughs> repent and turn because that would fall under the category of iniquity, self-will. Sure, sure. And that's, that's a dangerous thing. And we don't want to do that. So we're not validating bad behavior. What we're saying is, is that your salvation is not based on you somehow, you know, being a, a good Christian. Right, right. We talked about the sliding scale last time, I believe, yes. of yep. behaviors of you know, that person's a good Christian, which means I guess there's bad Christians too. Uh, the point being made in this passage is that is that our righteousness is a gift that we didn't earn. Mm -hmm. And once we have it, we can't earn to keep it. Yeah, that's good. That's a, that's a concept that really blows minds, religious minds anyway, because really, really, I would say, just based on ministerial experience, pastoring mm -hmm. for a number of years, is that and I, I don't think this is not an accusatory statement. This is an assessment that I believe is accurate, is that most people are very behavior oriented. Yes, 100%. In, in defining their faith, mm -hmm. you know. So if you can avoid bad behavior and do good behavior, then you're in good standing with God. But yet, you know, who defines the behavior? And, and there's just so many questions involved there. Yeah. That I would just, I would just particularly in it, new new converts but it's not just new this 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 is not just relevant for new christians this is relevant for preachers right right for humans yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know yeah. born yeah. again born again people we have to deal with this because we have an enemy and and there is a thing called condemnation and people do make mistakes you right. know and, and we need to repent and uh we've all done that let yeah. me jump back here real quick because you just mentioned uh, verse 10 of that ephesians 2 it's like for we're his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for yeah. good works. Yes. So that's why the righteousness was given to us was to yes. for good works, to do good things. Yes. So, you know, it's, I think one thing people, people um, deflect responsibility. So if they do yep. something wrong or they deflect their behavior to now God must be mad at me and God, and they make it where God is now, upset, angry, or really what's happened is they've acted outside of who they really are. Right. And then they feel that shame, guilt, and condemnation. So they assume God can't be with them all the time. Mm -hmm. They're in Christ Jesus. Exactly. <laughs> it's That's... Like, so so it, it, it confuses them and makes them feel unworthy, even though God's saying you're worthy. Exactly. You don't, you don't lose, you don't lose your, your sonship or daughtership 
mm -hmm. because a mistake is made. You know, humorous, humorous story here. Yeah. I think humorous, <laughs> but it proves it proves a point. Uh, when I was in school, uh, you know, middle school. Okay, uh, I was a little full of myself, and and managed to get in trouble. What? <laughs> and um, yeah, and uh, I remember coming home with a note, you know, from the teacher and uh, having to show my parents because I was going to fall under this uh, penalty of my mm -hmm. mischief. I've, I've been there before, yes. <laughs> and I was going to have to stay after school for I don't know how many days, and, uh, and they were going to give me certain custodial duties, I suppose, to, <laughs> you know, compensate for my bad behavior. So, right. so, so I came home, and I, I wasn't too concerned about my mom. Right. I mean, she's in heaven now. Both my mom and dad are sweet as she could be, but you know, she she was not overly intimidating presence. My dad now, different story. <laughs> Loving, gracious man, former military, you know, oh, commercial yeah. fisherman, loved God, but he was in charge, and I didn't want to have to deal with dad. Right. So I remember hiding when I knew he was coming home. I decided I was going to go to the bathroom, and I stayed there for a long time. I was hiding. And what I was doing is I was hiding from an, an encounter with him mm -hmm. because I was his son just as much before yeah. the crime <laughs> as I was, <laughs> as I was, as I was afterwards. Right. And, and I remember dreading to face him. Yeah, it didn't, turn, it didn't turn out that bad. He was not he was not a mean man at all. But I had a sense of condemnation that I had disappointed my father. Right. Christians carry that same that same type of self condemnation. Yes. Lo the love of God never changes for us ever. Yeah. It never it never changes for us. And God is really good. Mm -hmm. He's really gracious to us. Yeah. And righteousness is a free gift. Um, one more story, if you don't mind, on on long. Yeah, no. Because I, can, I can relate to that last story, just so you know. Yeah. Well, maybe you can. I don't know if you can relate to this one or not. Maybe you okay. can. Um, another time I got, and we're, we're talking about our relationship with our Father God and righteousness. And God's, God is not, God's not trying to keep people out. He's trying to keep people in. And, yeah. and I am thoroughly convinced yeah. that he grades everyone on a curve, for sure, called the blood of Jesus, which we certainly couldn't pass the test. Right. Uh, without he, without his grace and his mercy. And he, yeah. he, 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 the Bible talks about God even pitying mm -hmm. his children yeah. in the sense that he knows the frame of which we're made. And I'm not taking away from the magnitude and the grandeur of being in Christ. We need to have that in us, but we also need to understand that we're growing. And, you know, Christians really don't lose. They win or they quit. Right. Yes, exactly. You yeah. know, so don't quit. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember one time I got in trouble. I was, young, little, I was a young boy, and uh, I I had gotten trouble. You know, my mouth is usually was bit my biggest detriment. You know, as a, as a child, and how you have to learn to control it. You know, and so yeah. I I had I'd had a, a I'd encounter, I guess, with with my mom and my dad, and you know, my mouth got away from me, and and I got upset and whatever. And, and I, I guess I got thinking about that, and I decided the best thing for me to do is run away from home. I'm a little boy now, okay? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to have a mad fit, and I'm going to run away from home. Smart. <laughs> yeah, really brilliant. I probably would have come home by supper time if they just let me go. But anyhow, I, I went in my bedroom. I found a suitcase, and, and I just opened my door. I threw some stuff in there, probably not much of anything. Mm -hmm. It was more of an, emo it was an emotional moment. Sure. Well, I'm going to run away from home. So I got my suitcase and, uh, and I head down the hall to leave. And guess who I ran into face to face? Your dad. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to run away, but I have, a, I have a face to face encounter with my father. Yeah. And he says, boy, where are you going? <laughs> well, I told him I was going to run away. I won't tell you how the rest of the evening went, <laughs> but uh, there was there was certain there was a certain level of uh, correction placed on my body, <laughs> you know. <laughs> sure. But but, mm. but what was good what was good about that story is that, and there's more to it is that even when people 
are so upset and they're so condemned that they, they want to, they want to get away and they try to run from God. God still looks for them. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he stops. It's like Adam, it's like Adam and Eve, you know, they, you know, where are thou? God, well, you know, God knew, God knew exactly where they were. It was not for his, you know, yeah. he, he wasn't lost. Adam was, but the point being made is, is that God is good. God is gracious. Our, our righteousness is a gift. We need to rest in that. Well, I think it's interesting that, yeah, we need to rest in that grace, rest in that relationship. Yeah. And it's interesting because like Paul had very similar questions. It was more about, it was kind of, it was about grace, but really encompasses righteousness as well. Yes. He had it asked, I think like four different times. It's like, well, should we go ahead and sin or can we go ahead and sin because grace is taking care of it? And his answer every time was no, like no. absolutely not unequivocally. No. no, this is not, this is not a reason to sin. It's a mm -hmm. empowerment to free you from sin. Exactly. And the righteousness God has given us isn't a license like, oh, you're righteous, do what you want. No, it's you're righteous. Be who you are. Be righteous. Right. Exactly. Because otherwise you're operating in contradiction to who you really are. And that and I think that so many people live in, in that arena. Mm -hmm. And the longer and the longer you serve God and you grow spiritually yeah. and you, you have a greater understanding, it's not the sense that you've arrived. It's the sense that now there's a sense of connection of accountability because now you know what's going on inside of you. Yeah. You know, and, and, and you want to do, you want to do what's right. You want right. to live right. And if you miss it, then be quick to repent. God's, God's really quick to forgive. Yeah. He really is. If, if he, if he is telling us that we should be quick to repent, then he's, he's on his end, he's handling his job very well. Right. Yeah. I, I like, I like to tell people God is so good at forgiving you that he already did it 2000 years ago on the cross. Exactly. Jesus and, on all sin for all time, for all mankind once. So once, the sin that you just commit, you don't have to, what I say is you don't really have to, to ask God to forgive you. He's already forgiven you. What you have to do is thank him that he's forgiven you because it puts you back in, in a right understanding of who you are. It doesn't make God say, Oh, now you're forgiven again. It, it's, it, it, it cleanses you. It's, it puts you back in a position of that righteousness. If that it, totally, it totally, well, it's in second Corinthians five twenty one says for he made him who knew no sin. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him or in Christ. So our righteousness didn't originate with us to begin with. Yeah. Yes. It, it's originated with him. It's a gift that he gives. Uh, and we receive it. Now, obviously, if someone, you know, again, First John 1, 9 is, is relevant for Christians. And, mm -hmm. and some people might think that's their favorite verse, you know. Right. Because they use it a lot. But right, the fact, right. But the fact is that's God provided that for us. Sure. Because he knew that we'd have to grow. Mm -hmm. And he knew that we would have to, from time to time, even as believers, even as righteous before him, that we would commit an unrighteous act. Right. I'm glad that's there. Yeah. I'm, I'm, real, I'm really thankful for that because it doesn't validate the bad behavior, but it's a provision for for dealing with it. Yes. Until we get to the place where, you know, maybe some of the things that people are engaged in, maybe it could be habits. People have addictions. People have do things they deal with. Sure. Um, and they don't want it. They just feel trapped. Uh, right. You know, and God's a deliverer and he helps us. Yeah. Just stay, stay connected, you know, and just your righteousness is a free gift and God loves you. And, mm -hmm. you know, so, it's just an encouraging thing. Yeah. So how would you help somebody move from that condemnation? They've done something wrong, whether they're immature or mature. Let's say they, let's say they've been a Christian for 10 years and they just willingly, and they just made a wrong decision to do something to satisfy their flesh or whatever. They just sinned. Right. They just feel condemned because they did sin and the enemy just, you know, the enemy convinces them to sin and then beats them up for sinning. So right. how would you just help somebody get past that to where they're walking back in a knowledge of their righteousness? I would have to take them to the word mm -hmm. and just show them the heart of God. Okay. And, and, and again, you know, it's not about not being accountable and it's not about, you know, again, there's no validation. Here's the facts. When a person sins, they're going to feel condemned. Yeah, yeah. It's going to happen. Just It's just like, you know, one plus one's two. 
Mm -hmm. They're going to feel condemned. But the, but the real question has to come from where is the condemnation coming from? Yeah. OK, because it's in our mind, we think, OK, now I'm being condemned by God. Right. The fact is, you're not being condemned by God. Mm -hmm. You're being condemned by your own heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK, because your heart knows better because you're not living in agreement with who you are. Yes. So yes. now you're sensing condemnation. And automatically thinking that God's the one who's condemning you, and he's not at all condemning you. Mm -hmm. Your heart's condemning you. And so then how do you deal with it? Does it make it less important because you're condemning yourself or where it's coming from? And then you have to put, you know, we do have an enemy. Satan is a great condemner, too, and yeah. the accuser, you yeah. know. And then you have to factor in. I would, I would talk to them about not being governed by the way we feel. Yes. Okay. I'm not talking about temperature, you know, I mean, inside. Yeah. yeah. All, and I've had to deal with this. Probably every Christian on the planet has had to deal with this. Yeah. On a daily I mean, basis for the most part. <laughs> I mean, how many times have, have you made a mistake and you felt bad about it? Mm -hmm. Your heart condemned you. That's, that's actually a good sign. That's healthy. Yeah. You know, my wife and I were listening to our spiritual father, dad Hagen today. Mm -hmm. And he talked about, um, uh, this man that he knew who uh, would drink his coffee so hot, he would actually, it would, he would pour it in the cup and it would still be boiling. And he would put the cup to, and you probably heard him tell the story. This older man would put the cup to his mouth and he would just drink two thirds of the cup with it almost still boiling or, or still bubbling. And, and dad Hagen was a young man and he would just cringe. And, and what happened was over the process of time, that man had seared, yeah. Evidently, the nerve endings in his mouth, and he, mm. he had the capacity to do something that a younger, more tender man could not do. Yeah. And I would just encourage Christians, stay tender. Yeah. You know, if, if, if you do something you know is wrong, be, be quick to repent. Don't harden yourself to that. Because mm -hmm. actually what you're sensing is not condemnation. It's your own heart letting you know you're off track. Right. And that's a gift. Yeah. yeah that's, that's a real gift. That's yeah, a gift. That's God's love. That's God's love for us to yeah, let us yeah, know something you know. you're acting out of out of context and out of character. Exactly. And you and you know. And 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 so that's 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 a mechanism that God has actually given us if it's processed properly to let us know in our heart, you don't need to do that. There's I'm not condemning you, but that's that's let's you need to take care of that. Yeah. So I would encourage them, one, to be quick to repent and then not be governed, because I'm preaching to myself not be governed by the way you feel mm -hmm. because sometimes your feelings of condemnation, they don't change as quick as you'd like for them to. Right. You might do something, you know, you might say something to your spouse if you're married and it was unkind, or maybe you got mad or maybe you got mad at, you know, a friend or you said something you shouldn't have said or you do whatever and yeah. you repent, yeah. but you still feel kind of, you know, as we say, you feel like a dog. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? However dogs feel, you feel bad about it. Head down, yeah. Yeah, but you know, but it doesn't mean you're not forgiven. It just means that now you've got to not be governed by the sense of condemnation. And mm -hmm. you and you and you certainly can't open the door for the devil to let you live in that sense. Yeah. And that's where biblical knowledge, not just from a, a mental standpoint, but walking in the revelation of who we are in Christ. Mm -hmm. A revelation of righteousness, as we're talking about, a revelation yeah. of the goodness and the mercy and the grace of God, the redemptive work of Christ, so important for believers. Because if we don't have that, then I guarantee, I can guarantee an individual, here's what's going to happen to their life. Mm -hmm. They're going to get born again. They're going to recognize their need for Christ. They're going to hear a gospel message. They're going to respond. They're going to be legitimately born again and made righteous in Christ. Yeah. Then they're going to make a mistake and they're going to feel beat up for it. If they don't know this, they'll think God's the one beating them. Yep, and they'll yep. spend the rest of their life with this legalistic attitude that says everything about Christianity is behavior oriented. And I don't know if I can really do this very well because I'm just like the world's greatest mess up. Right, right. And, and we've got to get beyond that because our, our identity, not externally, but internally, our spiritual identity and having a knowledge of the word and who we are in Christ is key to this. And we have to learn who we are. Who, who, who am I? Mm -hmm. who, who, who is the new Brian? What relationship does he have with God? Who is he in, who is he in Christ? Right. And I've got to tell you right now, I'm still learning that. 
Yeah. I'm but still working. It's a, it's a never ending. Well, I, it may be never ending process because when we're, you know, his mercies are new every morning. And when we're in heaven, I think we're still going to be learning about different aspects of God and his mercy and his love and his character. Yeah. And it's going to just be mind blowing all the time. You know, Keith Moore, one of our instructors at Rama. Yeah. Yeah. It made, made a, made a comment one time. I thought it was kind of humorous. He said, you could, God's so vast, something like this. God's so vast and so wonderful and so great. And you're always learning and growing. It says you could live to be 119 years, 364 days, you know, 23 yeah. hours and 50 and 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 uh, 59 minutes. And right before you die, you look and you see something oh, wonderful about God you never knew before, and then you leave. <laughs> right. You know. So that's how wonderful He is. Yeah. That's how, that's how wonderful God is. And you know, I I think that and this is such of a good topic because if we can get this right yeah the topic of righteousness mm -hmm. uh and have a real clear biblical understanding and remove all the confusion out of the way as to you know what makes you righteous what causes you not to be righteous we talked about can you lose your salvation can you not you right. can renounce you as you said you know you can renounce your you can renounce that most people don't do that um mm -hmm. you know i like the way uh andrew womack said it um he said if you you know because there are people who after a place of maturing in the in the faith and stuff, make a decision. I think it's in uh, Hebrews six, but they make a decision after after different things, and they decide to renounce it. And then for them, there's no coming back because you have to sacrifice yeah. Jesus again. Yes. So he said that if you're in a position in your life and you're like, oh my gosh, I hope that's not me. Yeah, it's not because your heart not, is still the, turned and the Holy Spirit's still yeah. drawing you. So yes. if you have that thought that's not you. And, you know, you mentioned having a um, hardened heart earlier. Um, and I think that's such a, that's a result of condemnation that's gone unattended to. Yeah. It, it really hardens your heart because the only defense against feeling that bad is to shut it off or harden your heart so you don't feel that anymore. Because yeah. otherwise you're just miserable. So people harden their heart instead of, repenting and turning around and, and seeing everything from that that radical mind shift that repentance and seeing it from yeah. god's standpoint that they've been forgiven and and just accept his mercy and his love and his grace and you know that condemnation you you mentioned a couple times is it from god mm. you know romans 8 1 there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus exactly so if you're feeling condemned, which again, I love the definition of condemned is unfit for use. Yes. And I, I think that's such a thing. Most believers, when they do something wrong, they feel like God can't use them. Now they're unfit for use. They're unfit to be in his presence. They're unfit when the Bible tells us clearly throughout the word of God, that is not God's heart. No. You see, no. he's not looking to get people out. He's looking to bring people in. He is. And, you know, we're talking about our spiritual condition, the consciousness that we have inside. Mm -hmm. And that's where the that's where the battles are fought is internally. Yeah. You know, it's, it's you know, there's wars that are happening on Earth today and they're they're tragic. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of wars going on inside of people, even in Christians and honestly, ministers, too. And, you know, we deal with a lot of ministers and we know that. And and it's uh, because everybody everybody has to live out their own salvation, you know, and mm -hmm. Satan's cruel. We have an enemy. And yeah. so, you know. You touched on something that we might, with your permission, we might need to go there just a little bit. Yeah. And that is the fear that people have that they've done something they can't be forgiven for. Yeah. You know, because when, you know, Satan will grab in any straw that he can to use against a person. Sure. And if, if you take a person who sincerely wants to serve God, mm -hmm. they're doing their best to live clean and to have a tender conscience towards the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then a lot of times Satan will turn the tables on people like that yeah. and he'll try to make them think that, you know, yeah, you really want to and you should, but now you can't because, you know, you know, the Bible says if we sin will, after we come to the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. And what you just did, you did on purpose. So that was your will. You willfully did something wrong. So now you can't be even saved anymore. So you're lost. And that person, right. they, they just it's a torment. It's a demonic torment. And there's a lot of people that deal with that. I've mm -hmm. dealt with that in my life, you know, and, and growing yeah. up and in church and wanting to do right. And then, uh, and there's, and, and I found, you know, cause you don't like to talk about these things. I mean, I, I launched me into an extensive study as a very young man into this because it was so troubling to me. The mm -hmm. very concept that a person could be eternally lost was so troubling to me. 
Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of Christians on different levels deal with that. Yeah, when I had a talking, fear. Yeah, when I was a child, I mean, I had a fear of death because yeah. it's scary because I was like, I didn't know for sure. Because, you know, I was a kid, I was seven, sure. six, somewhere yeah. in there. So like, I didn't know for sure where I was going to go. And I remember seeing this one picture of the rapture happening and it, like a plane was crashing into a building. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, spirits coming up and you see all these yep. cars and smoke and everything happening and stuff and i was like where what would i be left yep. on that plane while it's cracked because the pilot got taken out? you know it's like you know so it it scared me as a kid yeah and and it's i i think that that's something that believers deal with mm -hmm. one thing i have learned over the years is that satan is very cruel yeah Yes. You know, yeah. I mean, he's, he's 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 hideously cruel and he will take advantage of even th even the best of people, mm -hmm. the most the most sincere Christians. Yeah. The, the, the most sincere seems to be the ones that have the most tender conscience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, th and it's good to maintain that all of your life. Mm -hmm. There's just something about that before the Lord that if you can remain soft and tender before him, if you're pliable now, you can be led by the spirit much easier. Yeah. You hear the voice of God much clearer. You can you can kind of stay on the path a lot easier if you maintain that. And this particular topic that you just mentioned is it's actually mentioned in, in, in a couple of places in Scripture in Hebrews six and in Hebrews ten. Mm -hmm. And he's talking to Hebrew Christians here who yeah. had been born again, filled with the Spirit, and he's talking about how they would respond to the pressures of their culture in turning away from Christ as the only way. And yeah. They live under a pressure that, as Americans, we're simply not familiar with. Right. We, we, we have lived in a very, as, as wicked as some of the things that are going on in America is, and even right now, some of the challenges of Christianity, Christianity is on a very low level of persecution compared to what the early church went through. <laughs> yes. Okay, so yeah. you know, we're, we've lived a very guarded life in a mm -hmm. lot of ways. But what happens, the pressure was so intense that, and with all the, the, the demonic influences and the, and the pressures of culture, they were tempted to deny Christ mm -hmm. and to say he's not the only way, that he's not the son of God. And it's kind of hard to imagine that a person could progress or digress to that after having been born again. Mm -hmm. But that, and it doesn't happen very often. Right. It can, it can happen. And it did happen, but the criteria that's laid out for that really eliminates even the possibility of it happening. Probably 99% or more of Christians. Yeah, I agree. Because, yeah, because he gives the list of the criteria. Right. We probably don't have time to go through all that, but I, I, I wouldn't want to leave any listeners hanging either. Mm -hmm. You know, it talks about, in Hebrews 6, it talks about, uh, you know, leaving the foundation of repentance and dead works and then a faith toward God. He gives of all these different things of building this level of maturity. Then in Hebrews 10, mm -hmm. he gives a list of the criteria. You have to be born again, mm -hmm. filled with the Holy Spirit, beyond babyhood stage, not even middle age. You have to be very mature in Christ. Yeah. yeah. You have to taste it of the powers of the world to come using the gifts of the Spirit. And after having hit that level of such spiritual maturity, then you'd had to make a conscious decision out of your free will to reject Christ. Like you said before the broadcast, renouncing your Christianity. Yeah. So they would have to do that. Not, that's even separate from being the pressure or the, or the temptation or, mm -hmm. you know, someone's got a gun to their head to recant and they're under this duress and in, in a moment of flesh, they do something or, yeah. the, or they're coming <clears throat> under this torment and all this stuff's going on. They're, they're responding. Right. God's really gracious on the what's in your heart. Yes, yes. You know, and really you would never even be able to know who even did that or who didn't short of a revelation from heaven. Right. Because only God knows the hearts of people. Yeah. But to comfort everyone, if you're concerned about it, then you've not. Yes. You have not crossed the line. If there's any concern about your spiritual welf welfare whatsoever, yeah. then that is proof positive within itself. That's good. That the Holy Spirit is drawing you and saying, you know what? I forgive you for everything you've done. Come on home. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. Just, 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 let's just move on. That's I'm, good. I'm, I'm, you know, and, and so that's something that you don't dismiss anything out of the Bible because it's right. all contextual. We need to live by it. Sure. But in, in that arena, 
Um, like I say, I'm, I'm going to say probably 99.9% of, and Dad Hagen will say this, 99.9% .9 of the Christians, he, he said preachers included. <laughs> and I've heard, I, I read that. He said, don't, they don't even qualify, right. you know, you know, for, for this. Yeah. And that just shows you the level of God's grace. Yes. It shows you the level of his love. It shows you the level of his mercy mm -hmm. and that God's a restorer. There yeah. is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who follow not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Yes. But even when the condemnation comes, it's not God doing it. That's right. Yeah. God so, always, the Holy Spirit always is convicting or convincing you of your righteousness. John yes. 16, that's his job is to convince you of righteousness. Yeah. Not point out everything you've done wrong of unrighteous deeds, but to point out who you are in righteousness. Yes. And that's, that just is a reflection of how good he is. And you know, he's for us. He's not against us. Aren't you glad? Yeah. You wouldn't, yeah. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want God against you. He's too big. That's right. <laughs> you wake like, smart. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And if God is, yeah, for, it's, yeah, if God's against you, you, you don't have a chance. So Your toes, just forget it. Yeah. But that's he's right. Not. That's right. <laughs> you know, that's he's, the good news. It is the good news. He's for, he's for us and, and he's, uh, he's empowering us. He's always drawing us. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we had a, we had an instructor. I, I, I don't know you would remember him, Brian McCallum. Yes. Kirk Brian McCallum. At yeah. He taught on uh, revelation quite a bit and wrote several books yeah. on revelation. He yes. He's retired air force. He flew the SR 71 blackbird. If you recall. Yeah. Very, very interesting man. And I, I, we, I really had a lot of respect and still do. He's in heaven now. Yeah. But he talked about how that he was called to the ministry, obviously, you know, in the heart and mind of God before the foundations of the world. He didn't kind of pick up on it till later in life, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, but God had a call on his life and he was in the air force and God preserved his life through different things. Yeah. And he didn't, he didn't even respond to really entering in that call until he was later in life. And he made the comment that God had hired him and held the job open for 30 years. And he didn't even show up to work. He held the job for him. You know, awesome. and, or yeah. something along that line. Yeah, and that, that shows you that that God that God doesn't change His mind and the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. God's not changed His mind about anybody, regardless of the mistakes they make. They may change their mind about themselves, but if we'll learn to stay word focused and not quit, mm -hmm. uh, if your heart condemns you, realize it's not God doing that. It's your it's your own heart, or the enemy is trying to bring condemnation. And a lot of times we open the door for that. Yeah, yeah. because of our own temperament. You know, if you're a sensitive type personality, I mean, I'm. I'm that way. I mean, I'm just being transparent that, you know, I, I want to do right, live right, think right, talk right and be right. And right. If, I, if I'm not, then I'm not happy about that. And I want to fix that. But I think people like that. And most Christians, I think, who are really sincere want to do right. Mm -hmm. That 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 temperament within itself can open the door some for the yeah. enemy. It's a two edged sword. It's good to have it, but guard it because learn to listen to the right voice. Mm hmm. You know, go let's 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 be word based here. And then you know, I, God always God always re respects the person's faith in the word, and it'll just shift something just like that. Yeah. You know, but God's long suffering, and He's not trying to keep people out. He's trying to keep people in. Yeah. And I would just encourage someone who's struggling, and and a lot of Christians honestly do struggle. They they really do. You know, sometimes Christianity is portrayed as people jumping up and down in church, and you know everybody's happy and. Life sure. is life is wonderful, and it is. It really is. But then you, you know, then Monday morning comes, yeah, and Tuesday, yeah. and you got to live your life day by day. Yeah, you know, and and God's a twenty four seven God, mm -hmm. and his and his mercy actually is good twenty four seven. Yeah, I think it's it, interesting because I think religion over the years has taught people that God is very legalistic. Yes, and He's always looking for a way to count you out. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. so if you sin, you're out. And yeah. if you think wrong, you're out. And yeah. like God's always looking for, like one guy described it as God's leaning over the handrail of heaven with a lightning bolt, just waiting for you to mess up, you know? Yeah. And that's not at all God. He's, that's not his heart. That's not his character. I mean, the, no. the, the fruit of the spirit is really describing, you know, who we are because we've been changed to look like Christ. Yes. And we grow into that. Yeah, we grow into that. And that's what God is. He's looking for a way to to bring you into the kingdom, not keep you out. You know, the, the scriptures talk about, you know, robes of righteousness. Yes. You know? Yeah. And, 
and it talks about a crown of righteousness. And there's, you know, the righteousness is really important to the Lord. When, when, my, when Mary saw myself were at Rama, we both had uh, these uh, uh, raincoats. Uh, I don't know if you can buy them now or not. They're like Inspector Gadget coats. You know what I'm talking <laughs> yes, about? The, yes, uh, exactly. Yes. It's like you wear them just like, you know, you, you, it's like a, you're a work for the government or something, but it was like a khaki kind of color. Yes. It a, had a certain look, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, that was a style then, you know, and I had one. Right. And she had one. And they looked a lot alike. But they were obviously different sizes, <laughs> and I and I remember getting ready to go somewhere one day and put on my coat, and I tried to put on the coat. And I got frustrated because I could, it wasn't fit wasn't fitting me right, <laughs> and it turned out it wasn't even my coat. Right. And her coat, which was smaller than my coat, <laughs> my coat fit her coat didn't, and right. I think from from the standpoint of living for God. We yeah. have to learn. We have to learn that God has clothed us with something that actually fits us. Yes. Yeah. And the, the enemy is always going to try to get you to wear something else to identify yourself differently than who you are. To, yeah. and it's tra it's tragic. It's a tragic thing because if a Christian says, "Okay, I'm not. I, I don't feel worthy. I'm condemned," and, and and that's all you ever hear is condemnation. I'm beat up, and you're, you know, it's like Dad Hagen's book we're we're, we're going through now, the Triumphant Church. You know, yeah. about the militant church, the defeated church, the triumphant church. Right. You know, that, that de 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 the defeated church, they don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're, they, they can't gain mastery over anything. And then if, they, if they're militant and they're trying to get mastery over it, and they're trying to be this. But yet, from a scriptural standpoint, we're triumphant. Yeah. And that's, that's the coat to wear. Yeah. That's Regardless right. of how you feel, that's, that's, that's our coat. And yeah, it's, it's been made for you. Yeah, it's been made for made, you. It is tailor-made for you. You might think you're a sorry dog in the natural, but you know what? The blood of Jesus is has not only forgiven you, he's positioned you to be able to wear that coat. And, you know, just because a person makes a mistake, that, don't let Satan reclothe you to re-identify you as a person. Mm -hmm. uh, don't quit. Keep moving. Yeah. Keep believing. Stay in the word. Grow. You know, if you're, if you're you know, if you're, um, you're, a, you're a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, I mean, you're spiritual. You know, because you're a pastor and everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you, you never have a challenge. No. You, know? right. yeah. you don't have to live out your faith because you're exempt. Right, you know, yes. You've got an exempt form from challenges. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, <laughs> you know, and so, you know, what you, know, what, what you do on Sunday morning is, is not what everybody else has to deal with because you live in this cocoon of, you know, we, I'm being facetious here. Sure. But yeah. there's... <laughs> but the... <laughs> But the but the fact is this, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. We have to live out our we have to live out our walk with God. Yeah. We have to depend on the word of the Lord, the revelation from heaven, and allow the Holy Spirit to help us to do whatever to, one just to live our lives. Yeah. And and we have and, and a lot of it revolves around how how we make conscious decisions to do right and how the Holy Spirit will always join with you at that moment. Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked about and I'm not sure how much time we have left here a little bit. I see it now, but we're, we've, we're good. we've talked about what happens to a person who maybe makes mistakes mm -hmm. and, and there's, they're feeling condemned and then they have to somehow kind of crawl out of the hole, so to speak, emotionally to get back in this consciousness of the righteousness. And that's what it is. Cause it doesn't change if you repent. Right. But it might be, it might be a good thing. That's just, just for a few minutes here to sure. talk about avoiding that. Yeah. So what yeah. is the what it what what would be a preemptive strike on not not getting in that position, but learning to alleviate that part and growing to the point where we learn that when we face these crossroads of yeah. trial or temptation or test, how do how do we how do we enact the word for the Holy Spirit to help us to rise above it? Mm -hmm. I like telling stories because people connect to that. Yeah. And I don't know you well enough to tell, so I'm gonna expose myself again. Can I do that? Sure. Um, it just illustrates a point. My wife and I were at a department store about an hour from our home. We live on an island, and mm -hmm. so there's not a lot of there's no chain department stores here. Right. So we were up we were up uh, to another island that has has a department store and it's a, it's a chain, and we were at the jewelry counter, and we were looking at something and we you know we wanted some help from one of the workers. Yeah, I know the jewelry. I, I worked 25, I've worked 25 years in jewelry, so I know jewelry. Okay, well, good, good. If we have any jewelry questions, we'll know where to come. Um, but this, this, there was no one behind the counter in this little, it was like a square in there, the glass case. 
Yeah. But I looked behind the counter over to the side in, in the not far away was a lady who had a, who had a department store badge on. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, that's her area. And she's visiting with someone. And I've been there talking about a recipe or right? they're talking about something that is like totally to me non-relevant to the moment. Right. And, you know, as a news flash, preachers have flesh too. <laughs> so I'm, st I'm standing there oh. and, and I'm thinking, you know, these thoughts are running through your mind like, okay, what this sarcastic comment that I'm getting ready to make or wanting to make is probably not something I should say, but I mean, right. assuming that she's wearing the badge, I'm kind of thinking she works here. You know, she's not like an imposter employee and, and I'm yeah. here and I'm a customer and you're visiting. And I mean, you know, you just really, it's like, come on, oh, yeah. you, know? you know, it's just life. Okay. Well, fortunately, this is a good story. I didn't <laughs> lose it. Yeah. I made a conscious decision that I wasn't going to behave that way, that I was mm -hmm. going to be gracious and that I was going to be gentle and kind and not say what maybe my flesh was rearing up to want to say. Sure. Well, she finally gets finished with her visit and she walks inside and starts waiting on us an hour away from our home. Mm -hmm. And she's talking to, she said, and she looks at us and we didn't know her. She says, I've been to your church. Oh gosh. <laughs> It's like, thank you, God. <laughs> I am a Christian here in the week. I have passed the test of ministerial ethics. <laughs> I did not have a meltdown with this person who knows that I'm a preacher. Right. But the, and it's like, I was so, I mean, I let my wife and I was because humorous, but I was, a, I was very relieved that I behaved in a righteous way that day. Because <laughs> I didn't know. Okay, yeah. here's the point. Yeah. Is that regardless of how we feel mm -hmm. when we encounter a situation, if we will make a conscious decision to yeah. do right, then the Holy Spirit will help you. Yeah. That'll empower that that's what releases the supernatural power of being in Christ that's in us to flow through our lives. Yeah. Sometimes it can be just a a simple decision. Like, I'm going to do that, or no, I'm not going to do that, or I'm not going to yield to the saying that, or, or whatever the case may be. And then it, then it boils down to even being led by the Spirit of God. Right. I mean, it's just a big, it's a big deal. So, so making that, if you, if you know to do right, no matter how much the pressure is to do wrong, mm -hmm. there's just, I've noticed over, I've just, know, I've just noticed over the years, there's something about that conscious decision of the human will yeah. that lines itself with the Holy Spirit that's in my heart. Yeah. The word pow. Now um, there's a release of power to see that happen. Does it yeah. always happen instantaneously where you, it's, it's like, you know, this magical explosion takes place and you're find yourself in this cloud of glory, glory, glory <laughs> dust. maybe not, but it, the, the outcome is always good. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny you mention that because just this morning I'm driving to church and this and it's, it's the road by our church is kind of a narrow road and people park on both sides so really only one car can fit through at a time well this you this uh, fedex truck pulled up and stopped and i i turn around the corner i come and i see it and i'm like if he would pull up another two feet i could fit between him and a parked car and get around him yeah but he didn't and he just parked there and i'm so i'm like Instantly, I just want to be like, honk the horn, you know? Yeah. And I was like, okay, I was like, it's like, I don't have to be in there at the exact, there's no, there's no reason to cause pressure on this guy who's trying to do his job. Right. So I made that conscious decision, like, I'm just going to wait. And I'm not going to get frustrated. And so I just enjoyed a few minutes of just peace. There you go. Yeah, and it was like, but you, I had to make that because my flesh had an instant reaction. Yes. And, and it's always a self-centered reaction. Why isn't this guy paying attention to me? I've got places to be. I got things to do. It's all self-centered. Yeah. But what the Holy Spirit, you know, helped me with was, you know, and I remember Dan Moeller says this a lot, but he said Jesus did not come to put weight on men. He came to no. pull it off. Yes. So I don't need to honk at this guy and cause him to put weight on him and pressure. 
I yeah. need to relieve that pressure. So I backed my car up and I just kind of waited. Instead of being like right on his bumper so he knows yeah. I'm irritated. I'm like, yeah. Not and then, and, 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 yeah, and then invite him to church on Sunday. Yeah. And then as I drive by, he sees the Hope City sticker on my car and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, it's like don't don't give church stickers to carnal Christians. They're not good advertising. <laughs> don't do that. You should have like a forum to sign before you let people advertise for church. Okay, no honking in parking lots, no having mad fits, no dirty looks. Yes, yes. You know, no single no, finger waves at people. Yes, nothing. yes. Yeah, just let's 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 have a good advertising department here. But uh, <laughs> you know, and I know we're running out of time. But there's a story of a, this. This is not personal, it's, and it's, it may not even be true. But it's just a, an illustration that that, that uh. That this young man walks into a church and he's and, he, and he's you know wearing a pair of flip flops or something and he stumps his he kicks the back of the pew by accident, and and he slips and curses, and that was kind of disruptive you know because that's generally not the behavior that's accepted in the church is for someone to you know have a breakdown and curse in the church, sure. and of course he you know, he knew what he did he felt really bad about it because it was a knee jerk reaction of a behavior that he wasn't proud of. Well, it wasn't long after that, an older woman came in and she kicked the same pew and she didn't curse. She says, praise God. And, and everybody looked around. Of course, there's a stark difference between a, a, an angry curse and a, and a, and a, and a glorification of God. Yeah. And after the service, the, the, the young man went to the woman and, and, and said, you know, I don't understand. You know, I'm a Christian and, you, and I kicked it and I cursed and you kicked it and you praise God. She says, what's the difference? And she says something like this. She says, well, honey, she says, the difference is. You're full of cursing. She said, I'm full of praising, you know. And so the point being made is, is we have to be filled with something to empower us to make those kinds of quality decisions. And that's where even this conversation today is healthy. Yeah, that's, that's why good. people need to be in, a, in into a good church, being taught the word of God. That's why we need to spend time our, on ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the word and, and, or listening to ministers to help us to get full of what we need to give us the tools to live out our righteousness. Yeah. You know, I That's mean, it's, uh, it's, it's just, God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. It talks about that. They're contained in God's great and precious promises. Yeah. Yeah. Everything yeah. we need. And so, although we may not have a consciousness of while we're reading the Bible, studying the Bible in a church service, hearing the word taught, there may not even be a consciousness of what that's actually doing inside of us. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's nurturing us spiritually, it's strengthening us, it's giving us, you know, the faith comes by hearing the word of God, which enables us to, act. you can't act in faith if you don't have faith. Right. And if you right. don't hear the word, you can't have faith. Yeah. And so, you know, we're, we've not been left orphaned, we've not been left with, with, without the proper equipment to live a successful Christian life. We can actually live righteously before the Lord, uh, and God's got a great plan. Yeah. And this, this, is, this is all part of that. I'm pointing, you can't see my hands. I'm pointing at my Bible over here. Right. You know, <laughs> I just realized that's like, you're not seeing the Bible. <laughs> it's this. Yeah. It's the there word. You, go. <laughs> you know, uh, but God's good and he's fair and he loves yeah. us and we can grow and um, and just continue. To, I would encourage people like we had talked about earlier, just continue to keep yourself well nourished, yep. you know, and, and, and be a doer of the word consciously. Make conscious right. decisions to do the Bible. Right. And, and, and pray. And, you know, the Lord helps us. And there's nothing wrong with asking God, help me in this. I need I need wisdom in this. The Bible talks about that. It's, yeah. you know, I think I, it's that's a good thing. Yeah. You ask for and, wisdom, and, he'll give it. Yeah. And just and just keep moving. You know, don't quit. And uh, if you fall, get up. You know, God, God will help you. And that's uh, right. That's you're right. In good shape. Awesome. Yeah, that's good. Amen. It's been another discussion on righteousness. And, uh, you know, if you don't mind, do you mind closing us out in a word of prayer? Not at all. Not at all. Go for it. Praise God. Yes. Uh, praise God. Father, we, we do come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you that we have the right and the privilege to approach the throne of grace boldly and without condemnation. And Lord, we, we can do that not because of our own works, not because we've earned any particular right to even in, have an interaction with you. But Lord, by the grace of God, by the blood of Jesus, by the love of God. And Lord, right now we, we pray for all the, all the listeners today. Lord, that have joined, joined us in this conversation concerning the righteousness that you've given us. And we ask you, Lord, to give us a spirit of wisdom enlightened. Lord, that we would have eyes to see spiritually, ears to spiritually hear, hearts to spiritually understand. Lord, so that we could grow and that we could become, Lord, all you've purposed for us to be. 
Lord, that we wouldn't leave anything on the table. Uh, God, that we would be partakers of all that you provided for us and that we would be able to be lights and beacons for you, bring pleasure to your heart. God, and we love you. We honor you. We thank you, Father God, for your goodness to us. And Lord, we do speak a blessing over the hearers today. We thank you, Father God, that, Lord, that we are righteous. We thank you for making us that way and giving us your righteousness. Not a watered down, scratch and dent version of it, but the real deal. Heaven sent, blood bought, yeah. righteousness of God himself is in us. And we thank you for that, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for watching, whether it's live today, right now as it's going on, or at another time. Thank you for watching. And if you're interested in more about righteousness, go back and look at previous TNTs uh, and just hear from different uh, ministers around the country uh, who've already been talking about it and different aspects of it. And it's great to, to hear uh, different people's perspective, different people's angle, because it all comes... It's, it all comes a little different, but it's building the same frame around the Word of God. So it's, it's really good. So uh, thank you again for joining us uh, today. And if you don't mind, uh, Brian, just hanging out for a minute. I'm sure. going to get it on Facebook. So thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank Have a you. great day. God bless. God bless. Bye-bye.